Hi there, Toby Lockram from Zero Risk International. Um, great to be on board and uh, thank you very much for the AIBD for inviting me in today to uh, have a chat with you about a uh, uh, little to do kind of safety and security tips for undercover documentaries and um, some of the surreptitious kind of filming and recording as well. Um, probably what I'm going to try and explain to you is that we've done a huge amount of this uh, work in this area. Uh, it is highly uh, risky, it's highly dangerous as you, you all know. And uh, from my point of view, having taught this particular subject through um, to a lot to the AFP journalist team that on a regular basis and to the BBC and some of my other particular news colleagues as well at uh, Eurovision back in UK, sorry, back in Europe as well. Um, <laughs> what it is, is that uh, I'm going to probably give you um, some really good tips anyway for you to take away and uh, keep you safe. Um, it is a tricky area, but uh, with the right application, the right knowledge, uh, you can get through this. So what do we look for, first of all? Well, the interesting thing for me, first of all, is to make yourself less of a target. And uh, what we do, first of all, is look at what the interview is going to be. Do the actual people that are going to want to chat to you or whatever, uh, or to put something down on record, um, you know, do they want you to come to them? Well, actually, you should try and resist that if you can and try and meet at a neutral venue if you can. So at the end of the day, people can oversee where you are. You should only keep the actual interview down to a minimum of a couple of people. Uh, we've done this in the past when we've interviewed uh, terrorist suspects or uh, police informers and so on and so forth, where at the end of the day, um, we only wanted to make sure that uh, a couple of people knew about this. The more you tell, the worse it will get and the actual leak will get out and your position will be compromised. So what you must do is just make sure that you can actually kind of keep that group to a minimum. Um, the next thing is really, and I'd strongly recommend this, is that we actually um, have got uh, a security app that we've developed and uh, you can actually kind of uh, download it online, uh, Zero Risk Sec app and uh, AIBD know about this as well and uh, we've actually explained to them, it is a great tool. It's, uh, it's basically a piece of information for you to look at with regards to how you set the interview up and so on and so forth. Uh, but on top of that as well, what you've actually got is uh, a tracker device there that uh, when it's switched on, we can actually kind of track every 10 minutes surreptitiously through the phone and uh, we uh, are able to actually push messages into you if there are any particular problems uh, day or night 24 7. on top of that there's a, a unique feature called check-in and check-in is brilliant because if your editor uh, really is concerned about you traveling to remote location villages or whatever uh, what you can do with the check-in is you can press the button and the latitude and longitude goes right the way back the coordinates goes back to the editor-in-chief or your manager, your supervisor, your, your line manager, whatever. And uh, that way um, you can have a really good record and, and an assurance that people know that you're okay and you're safe. Um, likewise, we use this on a regular basis now for any particular terror attacks or uh, natural disasters where there is something that happens in a region and journalists themselves, what they do is they just simply press check in and everything's actually fine, it's recorded. Um, but please know this is that uh, from the tracker side of it is that uh, it's only my team that actually have access to that. Nobody else does. And uh, in the event of an emergency, uh, your organization could call us and, and just say to us, like, you know, that your or their concern, I should say, for your safety. OK, so what we're saying really is that um, you have to have you have to use technology in this day and age anyway to help you out and make you safe. The rest comes to you. So a lot of it really is to do with common sense. Uh, one of the big things, one of the features to do with uh, undercover investigations, believe it or not, is your vehicle or your mode of transport. And uh, what we're saying to individuals when they go into a, uh, an undercover investigation or the interviewing a criminal gang or whatever, is making sure that uh, you don't go in with a car that can be tagged to you, i.e. the registration plate, the make, the model, uh, the different type, the dents on the side of the car, uh, you know, it, little things that are inside the car. Please don't take your own vehicle to something like this. Um, if you can actually have a hire car or whatever, then please try and use the hire car. Um, it, it goes without saying because there's no trace back to you then. Okay, so the other one thing you want to do as well is you want to try and see if you can come off things like electoral registers, uh, any other particular kind of uh, memberships that you've actually got where your address might be revealed and uh, making sure you try and see if you can stay the grey man uh, in the situation like this, because uh, the less knowledge that's out there on you, uh, the better. Um, <clears throat> the One other thing I, I would suggest as well, from a community group point of view, is you've got a lot of people like neighbours and friends and whatever that actually look out for you, but probably know what you do. Uh, in Bangladesh, 
We had one journalist that we looked after who was under a specific threat from Al Qaeda. And that what we had to do is to uh, uh, change his anonymity, change the way he worked, uh, his, the way he went backwards and forwards from work and the patterns that he set. So that's another really important point for you. Please, please, please don't set patterns uh, when you're moving from A to B. And always be careful about whether you're followed, whether somebody else is having a look at you, whether anyone is making an inquiry about what's going on. And uh, just make sure that you are safe. Okay, so I think the other thing we, we always teach as well is that with a vehicle is that making sure you keep your vehicle as dirty as possible. Why is that? <laughs> okay, the tendency would be to try and clean it, but what you need to be able to do is... Uh, you can actually see straight away if someone is actually been tampering with your vehicle, whether it's to try and get into the vehicle as a break-in uh, or to plant something in the vehicle, whether it's to try and frame you uh, or even a device, a suspect device. So please just make sure your vehicle is actually kind of filthy uh, when you're driving around. And uh, but at the end of the day, when you park it, you park it in an open area with lights and everything else for that matter, not somewhere in the back of a car park where at the end of the day, it can be tampered with or somebody could try and get to you. Um, so that's the vehicle. And uh, again, the other thing with the vehicle is, is you just don't leave anything on display uh, for any passerby or a particular individual to look at and uh, identify uh, them, the vehicle, I should say, with you. Um, moving on to IT. IT is quite an important one as well. And uh, the AIBD have asked me to, uh, uh, to have a chat with this. Uh, Nabil said it's, uh, it's an important subject. So what I will say is that uh, we are dealing with huge activities right now of uh, corporate fraud and things that are going on uh, in the communities. And um, I think at the end of the day that uh, it's safe to say that uh, your computer and your devices are full of information. And that what you want to try and do is to keep that information down to as minimum as possible. Um, so what you should be doing is making sure at the end of the day that uh, this information is... Uh, uh, first of all, is password protected, so at least about a six-digit password to get into your computer or your phone. Um, that at the end of the day, that your passwords aren't stored on the computer or in the computer or anywhere that on your phone that uh, people can access. And uh, on top of that, that basically any information that you've actually got going into an investigation is not on the computer. So you need a clean computer to go into there and a, cl a clean phone as well. Uh, very good to take two phones with you and keep one as a, a bit of a storage phone. The next one is an emergency backup phone as well, uh, but please keep all your information in, uh, down to a minimum, especially if you're doing an investigation on opposing groups uh, where at the end of the day, something might be said or done uh, that could be retrieved that will get you into some real trouble. Um, your kind of situation with your phone as well is that um, you've got to understand is that if you want to say something, okay, in, in the course of your investigation, uh, or say something in the course of your journalism uh, days, then what happens is that information is going to be freely available to anyone. Uh, so please, please don't put it online. Don't put it, don't post it up uh, if you think it's going to get you in trouble. The other real weak spot with journalism as well is uh, the social media side of it. Everyone wants a profile. Everyone wants to, to really go out there to, uh, to make sure that everyone knows what's going on with, uh, with what, the, what you're doing. But it's really going to get you in trouble. If you come into a sensitive time when you're doing this investigation or you're looking at criminal gangs or whatever, um, again, make yourself a great man. Take every single kind of link off to social media, anything that relates to your family, to your friends, uh, to anyone else at all that actually could be linked to you uh, because that is the weakest link as far as the investigation is concerned. So you really want to try and keep everything down to a minimum and uh, make sure at the end of the day that uh, you remain vigilant all the way through. Uh, you look at your home that you've actually got and uh, figure out just exactly from a security penetration point of view, you know, how you think you could breach that. And again, if you have any particular issues uh, to do with this particular security side of it, please email me at uh, info at zeroriskinternational.com. But however, stay safe and uh, please, please, please look after yourself. And uh, it's great to chat to you. Take care, Tony Lockman, Zero Risk, over and out.